Welcome back everyone to Learning Meditation. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to be solving problem 16.124, okay? So it says, the disc rolls without sleeping such that it has an angular acceleration of 4 radians per second squared and an angular velocity of 2 radians per second. At the instant shown, determine the acceleration of point A and point B on the link and the link's angular acceleration at this instant. Assume point A lies on the periphery of the disc 150 millimeters from C, okay? So what we're given in here, well, we have disc, this disc um, that uh, we ha has point A and C, and we're also given that from point A and point B, we have this, um, let's call it like little beam from A to B, okay? We're given the angular velocity, the angular acceleration, and we're asked to find what's the angular acceleration well, I'm sorry, what is the acceleration of point A and what is the acceleration on point B, okay? So, as always, let's just start with my givens. Well, I have that the, ac the angular acceleration is equal to 4 radians per second square. My angular velocity is also given as 2 radians per second. And well, the distance from C to A is written in here, so I'm gonna leave it in there. And how are we gonna solve this problem? Well, in order to solve this problem, we're going to utilize these two equations. The first equation in here, the acceleration of a point, is equal to the angular acceleration times the radius, but this is only the acceleration of the tangential acceleration of that point, okay? So in order to find the acceleration of point A, we're going to utilize relative acceleration, okay? So this is how we're going to do it. So let's just start with the acceleration of my point A is going to be equal to relative to my point C. So point C, the acceleration of point C, plus the angular acceleration cross product of the distance between a and C minus the angular velocity square multiplied by the distance between A and C, okay? So let's check out what we have and what we don't have. So the angular, I'm sorry, the, only the acceleration of point A, we don't know it, that's what we're trying to find. The acceleration of my point C, we don't know it either. However, with for point C, we can utilize this equation and this is the reason why. Well, my, we have a disc, right? And as this disc moves, the next point is going to move like that, right? However, my point C will remain in this direction, meaning its acceleration is only tangential. So, well, since we know that its acceleration is only tangential, this equation will be enough to know that acceleration. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, the acceleration of C has to be equal to the angular acceleration, which is four radians per second, multiplied by the radius. Well, the radius is going to be um, 0 0.15. Well, why 0 0.15? Well, it's 150 millimeters. If I change it to meters, it's going to be 0 0.15, okay? And if we plug this into our calculator, we will find out that this is equal to 0 0.6 and the units should be meters per second square. Okay, so what we can do is now we can say, hey, I know the acceleration of C. So let's go ahead. We know the, ac the angular acceleration. We can determine definitely the distance of my point A with respect to my point C, right? It's just the distance over here from point A. A to C, we know the angular velocity and we know now the distance as well. So let's go ahead and plug my numbers in. So we have that the acceleration of my point A is equal to my 0 0.6. Now, what is the direction of this 0 0.6? Well, since my point C comes from here to here, that means that it only moves in my I direction, right, in the horizontal direction. So we have 0 0.6 in the I direction plus the cross product between my angular acceleration, well, we found that we know it's given to us as four radians per second. Now, what is the direction of this angular 
acceleration well we have we gotta follow the right hand rule right so if we go like this the positive direction is supposed to be counterclockwise but in this case we have a clockwise direction so we have a negative in the k direction k direction meaning out of our page cross product of the distance of point a with respect to c well as we can see it's only vertical meaning that we have a total of 0 0.15 in the j direction positive because it's going up okay then we have minus the angular velocity to a square multiplied by the same distance which is 0 0.15 only in the j direction so if we try to simplify this we have that the acceleration of a is going to be 0 0.6 in the i direction plus now let's do this cross product so we have k multiplied by j will give me a negative in the i however we have a negative in here therefore it becomes a positive and we're going to have 0 0.6 in the i direction okay so recall k cross product j will give me an i and due to the negative in here negative and negative becomes uh, positive then we have minus and then we have a simple multiplication in here and if we do that well this becomes a 4 multiplied by 0 0.15 same as my previous multiplication so 0 0.6 but in this case we'll be in the j direction okay so now the last thing just combine them by terms we got 1.2 in the i direction the multiple the, the summation of these two and we have minus 0 0.6 in the j direction so we just found out the acceleration of my point a what i'm going to do is i'm going to find its magnitude and its direction so if we want to do the magnitude of my acceleration at point a we're just going to apply pythagorean theorem so we have 1.2 square plus negative 0.6 square and if we plug this into our calculator it will give us 1.34 and the units should be meters per second square now if we have the magnitude we gotta give it a direction so we're going to find that angle theta it's going to be equal to tangent the inverse tangent I'm sorry of our opposite which is 1.2 I'm sorry negative 0 0.6 my apologies divided by 1.2 and if we put that into our calculator this will give me a negative 26.57 degrees now i just want us to understand what this angle really means so if we pay attention in we have a horizontal component that is positive therefore something like that and we have a negative in the j component therefore if we add these two up so let's assume it's something like this correct so this is my i and this is my j component if we add them up my final resultant acceleration would look something like this and the angle that this is describing is this negative 26 so in order to show that we're going to display our angle like this and now we can get rid of that negative since we can uh, visualize uh, where this angle is coming from okay so we found just our first answer for point a so all of this can be counted as my answer depending on what exactly they are asking now how are we going to find the acceleration of point B very similar the acceleration of point B we're going to find it relative to my point A so we're going to have acceleration of B is equal to the acceleration of A plus the angular acceleration cross product the distance of B relative to A minus the angular velocity squared multiplied by the distance B relative to A okay so same procedure let's check what we have the acceleration of B is what we're trying to find. The acceleration of A, we just figure it out. The angular acceleration. Now this one, we don't have it. And you're going to ask why if we have the angular acceleration. So let's just go back ahead into here. 
and we see that A and B are connected by this rod or this little beam, right? Now, we're, we're given the acceleration and the velocity of the disk. We were never given uh, of this uh, beam. But what we can do is that this beam, basically as my A tries to move in this direction, well, my beam has to slowly keep moving towards the right, correct? However, since this disk is moving without sleeping, we are also assuming, without sleeping, we're also assuming that this bar won't sleep, meaning that it won't rotate. It will have an angular, its angular velocity is equal to zero. Okay, so we go with that. However, we don't know about the acceleration at that specific instant. So we don't know the acceleration, the angular acceleration. Therefore, uh, the only thing that we can conclude is that the angular velocity is equal to zero of, I'm going to call it B because it includes part B and A. And the other thing that we have to look is that this point B only travel in the horizontal, right? That means that my acceleration in the J component is actually equal to zero. So we're going to have that into consideration when we're solving for our problem. Now, as we can see, we cannot find the acceleration of B, but don't worry, we're going to figure it out later. We have the distance. Well, the distance, we can find it out very easily with our problem. So we have this too. And as we said it before, we concluded that, well, our angle of velocity is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and try to solve this problem. We have the acceleration of B is equal to the acceleration of A. So 1.2 in the I plus I'm sorry, minus 0 0.6 in the J direction. Then we have plus the angular acceleration of B, I'm gonna call it like that, in the K direction, right? It has to be in the out of page direction. Cross product, the distance between B and A. Well, let's go and see. We're looking at the distance of my point B relative to my point A. Well, we, all we have to do is travel down twice this amount, so we'll have an amount of 300 millimeters down and positive 400 millimeters. So if we compare that into meters, we got positive 0 0.4 in the I direction and negative 0 0.3 in the J direction, okay? So this is our equation. If we try to simplify a little bit more, we have 1.2 in the I direction minus 0 0.6 in the J direction plus the cross product between K and I will give me positive J. So we have 0 0.4 acceleration, angular acceleration of B multiplied by um, uh, in the J direction, as I said before. And now the cross product between K and J is at negative I, but since we have a negative 0 0.3, it will become positive 0 0.3 acceler angular acceleration of B in the I direction, okay? So now what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna break this equation into I and J components, and that way we can solve this problem. So in the I component, I have the acceleration of B, which we don't know, equal to 1.2 in the I direction, right? So I'm going one term by one term, looking at the I's. The next one is this one, and then plus 0 0.3 acceleration of B in the I direction. Now, since all of these terms are in the I direction and we're already specifying that, we don't have to write those I's. Now, in the J direction. So what happened in the J direction? As I explained before, the acceleration of B it's zero and that happens because it can only move horizontally it doesn't move up and it won't move down because of this surface either so we have that that acceleration is equal to zero and has to be equal to negative 0 0.6 in the j direction right so negative then and we have plus 0 0.4 angular acceleration of b now as we can see from this equation, we can solve that the angular velocity is equal to 
0 0.6 divided by 0 0.4. And if we plug this into my calculator, we will get equal to 1.5 and the units should be radians per second squared. Now, this helps us because we can now plug it into this equation and we will find that the acceleration of B is equal to 1.2 plus 0 0.3 multiplied by 1.5. And if we plug this into my calculator, we get 1.65 and the units in this case will be meters per second square. So we can say, hey, the velocity of B is equal to 1.65 in the i direction and is meters per second square. Now since it's only in the i direction that means that we're going towards the right and we don't have to find either the magnitude and direction basically this is the magnitude and the direction. Uh, so we found the acceleration of b and we also found the acceleration of a. So I hope you guys liked the video. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.